What's going on, everyone? So it looks like Giannis may end up forcing his way out of the Milwaukee Bucks. So Giannis could force his way out of Milwaukee, per sports reader. Uh, there is a rising sense of confidence that if things go badly in Milwaukee, that Giannis could be available for trade, would really force his way out of Milwaukee in the next year. Now, look, the Dame and Giannis pairing, just, it hasn't worked. It doesn't look good. Uh, they have, like, zero chemistry out there. They're usually better when each individual is on the court rather than when they're both on the court together. Um, they both relayed that they didn't spend any time together this past offseason working towards uh, just, you know, building some level of familiarity. And, you know, you look at Milwaukee as a team as a whole, right? Like, they're, they're very old. Now, look, Giannis put pressure on Milwaukee to go make a move. And they ended up making that move Damian Lillard. You can't really knock Milwaukee because they were kind of, their backs were a bit against the wall. Um, and on paper, Giannis and Dame make all the sense in the world, right? You get a, a scoring guard that can take pressure, go get you 30 a night, and then Giannis being Giannis. You got that big, small that we've seen have so much success over the history of the league. Uh, but it's just, again, it was another old player added to another old team that needed to really get younger. And then on top of that, in my opinion, they made the wrong choice in trading Drew Holiday over Chris Middleton. Now, obviously, Chris Middleton, the guy can't stay healthy. The guy can't stay on the basketball court. He's incredibly inconsistent at times, too. But it's not even that. With Dame and his lack of defense and lack of ability, you need somebody that you can slot alongside him that can apply point of attack pressure, uh, can kind of, you know, operate as like your two, you know, point two guard and kind of let Dame be more of a two guard than a point guard uh, and just be that, that guard pressure guard. Uh, and you just don't have that. And they were trying to do it with Malik Beasley, and obviously that was a disaster. And then now you're trying to see them do it with Gary Trent Jr., who, you know, as like your secondary, sure. But as your lead guard on the defensive side of things, it's just he's not that. He's not what you need him to be there, right? And he's probably best as like a backup as a reserve rather than your starter. And, you know, with Chris Middleton not being able to stay healthy, that doesn't help either. And even he can be inconsistent on the defensive side at times. So you, you got rid of the only guy that you probably should have kept on this team. You overpay for Brooke Lopez. You end up giving Chris Middleton a max. And it's just like now with the new CBA, Milwaukee's stuck. Like, what what is Milwaukee going to be able to do? Like, what team is lining up to, to take on Chris Middleton's long-term money? What team, you know, maybe a couple teams would be willing to take on Brooke Lopez, but even then, like his contract, it, it's not terrible just given that it's it's a shorter term contract, but still, it's like, you no, know, who wants to pay 20 million for that? And then even then, like, what are you getting in return? You're not going to get a bunch of picks and assets and stuff. So it's just like, at what point do you just go, all right, like, we're going to have to tear it down? And, I, and you already heard Giannis talk about how, oh, you know, if if we don't win the championship, then I may end up getting traded. Like, nobody it, nobody believes Milwaukee would ever trade Giannis unless he asked for it and forced his way out. Nobody. Like, Milwaukee would never trade Giannis as long as he is willing to stay there. But... If Giannis starts really kind of putting pressure on Milwaukee and really starts to to make things challenging, then, yeah, I could see them. You might as well, right? He's only getting older. He's had his injury issues himself. He hasn't been incredibly reliable. Um, and it's just like you might as well just get as much as you can and start the rebuild and then trade Dame for as much as you can. I still think teams would take on Dame. Miami would probably still take on Dame. Um, no, and they might not want to mess around because, you know, last time they messed around, somebody came in and swooped up on Dame. So, you know, you may be able to get a nice return for, I, I don't think you're going to get, you know, a, a, a really good return for Dame, but I think you might, you know, you might be able to get a first and you know, a couple nice young players maybe. Um, and then Giannis, Giannis, you're going to get, an, an insane haul for you're gonna get you're gonna get a, a big head start in your rebuild process for Giannis. Right, a team like Golden State, you probably get whatever you want. Right, your bare minimum, you start. If I'm Milwaukee, I'm I want you know Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. You know, if you you know maybe you even hit up a team like like the Thunder and try to go get like Chet and you know Jalen Williams, right? Like something like that. Point is, 
is that you're going to get a nice return for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, but uh, two teams that have came to the front of the line for Giannis, that supposedly Giannis himself uh, is interested in going to, is the Miami Heat and the Brooklyn Nets. Miami, see, okay, so Brooklyn makes zero sense. Unless Brooklyn is going to go and basically line themselves up to get another star or something, right? Like maybe you're pairing Giannis with somebody else um, and you're, you're basically just unloaded because you got like Ben Simmons and all these other guys that are falling off the books, right? So maybe if you're Brooklyn, you're, you're going and you're bringing in a star in free agency. I don't know which star that would be if you're, if you're Brooklyn, um, but maybe you're bringing another star and then you're bringing in Giannis along with that star. I just like right now you look at, at Brooklyn, like if you just added, you know, say you took off Ben Simmons and you added Giannis, like how good is Brooklyn, right? I don't think Brooklyn, I think Brooklyn is as good as if not maybe slightly worse than what the, the Milwaukee Bucks are right now. Right, so I don't think you're winning championships or anything like that with Brooklyn as they're currently constructed. Now, obviously, they'll, they'll probably change some stuff, they'll move some stuff around. Um, they do have some pieces that you can trade and unload, but you're trading basically everything to go get Giannis. So it's not like you're going to be able to go trade for Giannis and then go turn around and trade for a, another star. So you're probably hopeful to, to clear off a bunch of salary and then end up landing that other star, but. Again, like, who is that? All the stars that are available are, like, Kyrie and James Harden. You already tried that. That didn't work. Um, you know, I, like, I, I just, I don't see who that pairing is. Like, Brooklyn doesn't make any sense to me, personally. Miami, on paper, makes sense, especially if you can keep Jimmy Butler. But I think, personally, Miami needs that that bucket getter. You know, somebody, like, like Dame made sense, for Miami. Donovan Mitchell made sense for Miami. Because you look at like the roster with like Bam Adebayo and like Jimmy Butler. They're two guys that are willing to do the dirty work. They're two guys that, you know, can, yeah, they can score, go get you 20 on any given night. But they're not these just like natural scorers. They're not these guys that are, you know, just taking guys off the dribble, you know, shooting over the top regularly. You know, Jimmy Butler can. We've seen him do it, right? But he's kind of more operating in the mid-range, right? He likes to get to his spots, kind of bully ball, um, where, you know, somebody like a, a Donovan Mitchell or Damian Lillard can go and knock down 10 threes a game and, and just go get you 50 on any given night, right? Like, you need something like that, in my opinion. Miami needs that, like, go-to score. And look, Giannis, obviously, I mean, he can go get you 30 a night, but his game and his style, would it fit with Miami? And are you giving up Jimmy Butler, right? And so you like letting Jimmy Butler walk and kind of he's being replaced with Giannis. But even that, like, I don't know how well that works, right? Like, is Bam and Giannis... Like, what are the other pieces you're putting around? Because you're going to have to give up stuff. So you're probably trading, like, Tyler Hero, Jaime Hawkins, uh, you know, like, various, uh, all the young guys you have to go get Giannis. And I just, again, I, like, Miami, Giannis for Miami just doesn't seem to make sense to me unless you, like, completely, like, revamp that roster. If you kind of revamp and retool that roster, then maybe, but... Like, again, you kind of look and it's like, okay, if you turn to, like, Tyler Hero, Jaime Hawkins, where, and, like, all the young guys into Giannis, right? Does Jimmy, Bam, and Giannis, does that get you a championship? I mean, you could argue yes, because Jimmy and Bam has gotten you the finals a couple times. Imagine if you have Giannis. But is there, would their style of play mesh is my problem, is my concern, is my question, right? Now... Again, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. It's just, it's very questionable in my opinion. Um, but I like, again, I think like Giannis on like the Warriors, you, him and Steph could probably go win a championship. I think him and Steph would be much better than uh, what you see with Dame and Giannis. Cause one, Steph is just better Two, like Dame didn't want to be in Milwaukee, right? Giannis you know, he's kind of flirted with the idea of playing with Steph. I think he would want to be in Golden State. 
And I think Steph would kind of welcome him open arms. And I just think that they'd have a better, just natural relationship. And, you know, they still would have enough talent, enough pieces, and could still, you know, do some stuff to go potentially win you a championship. Or, again, you go to, like, an OKC, him and SGA, like, even if you were to trade, like, Chet and Jalen, like, you'd be great. Like, imagine, like, Giannis in place of of those two guys with SGA, and you'd still have, like, Alex Caruso and Dort and... You know, you'd still, you know, Hartenstein and guys like, like, you'd be really good, right? You probably, like, if the Thunder can't get over the hump this year and and get to the finals or win the championship, I mean, they may look to go make a move to go get Giannis. Go get Giannis. Now you're probably the best team in the NBA. Um, but also, again, at the end of the day, what does Giannis want? Just because th- those reports came out doesn't necessarily mean, and are those the only two teams he's interested in, right? Like, those are just kind of the two teams that were kind of thrown out for Giannis, and Brooklyn keeps being mentioned, right, we keep hearing Brooklyn, like, every time a star is mentioned, which I think is really odd, right, like, they, don't get me wrong, they have great role players, but, like, half of them you're probably trading to go get the guy, and, like, if you could just add two stars to that team, then yeah, or if you could turn Ben Simmons into one, and then sign another, then yeah, you'd be in very good shape, but I just, you're gonna have to give up all kinds of stuff, and then free up caps. It's just, I, I don't know how well Brooklyn makes sense unless, yeah, if you're getting Giannis and then going and getting that other star, again, what is that other star? And can Giannis even play with another star, right? Like, some guys just don't play well with others. Is he a guy that just, that's just who he is. He just doesn't play well with others. He's just a guy that doesn't, that isn't capable of, of being that guy. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's just, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out going forward. What does Giannis ultimately do? It does feel like it's kind of coming to the end of the road for Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. But will he will he eventually actually get out? I think so. Like, if I had to, like, put money on it, like, is Giannis in a Bucks uniform two years from now? No. I don't think so. I don't think he. I don't think he requests the trade this season. Like I don't think at the trade deadline or something. Unless Milwaukee's just like falling off of a cliff. Um, I think as long as Milwaukee is like a playoff team, I, I think he at least uh, makes the effort. I think he at least makes the attempt, and then in the off season goes like, "Hey, get me out of here!" Right? But you know the Bucks. They're they're just they're in they're in a rough place to to put it nicely. But anyway. I have you feel whatever your thoughts are. I'd love to hear it because, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you think Giannis ends up getting a trade? Do you think he requests a trade? Where do you want to see him end up? Where do you think he ends up? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.